Our first witness is going to be uh, Elizabeth uh, Melito. Um, she serves as a senior executive counsel for the National Federation of Independent Businesses, or Independent Business Small Business Legal Center. Uh, in her capacity as a senior executive counsel, Ms. Melito frequently counsels businesses in areas of human resource law. Uh, Ms. L uh, Melito, welcome. And uh, I might explain, too, real quick before you get started. Um, the, the lights are set up for five minutes, uh, a testimony, and when you get down to one minute left, it turns yellow, and then when it's over, it turns red. And we're not going to break anybody's arm if you go over uh, over time, but uh, try to keep, if you can, keep it within. But uh, again, thank you all for being here, and, and Ms. Melito. Thank you, Chairman Graves, Ranking Member Velasquez, and Distinguished Committee Members. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here with you today. My name is Elizabeth Melito, and I serve as Senior Executive Counsel with the National Federation Independent Business Small Business Legal Center. NFIB's mission is to promote and protect the right of its members to own, operate, and grow their businesses, and it represents 350,000 businesses nationwide. The typical NFIB member employs 10 people and reports gross sales of $500,000 a year. The NFIB membership is a reflection of American small business, and I am here today on their behalf to share a small business perspective with the committee. Currently, small businesses in this country employ just over half of all private sector employees. Small businesses pay 44 percent of total U.S. private payroll, and small businesses generated 64 percent of net new jobs over the past 15 years. Small businesses are America's largest private employer. And for that reason, we applaud the committee for holding this hearing and highlighting the exceptional problems that labor rules can place on small businesses. Suffice it to say that labor law is difficult to understand. Even experienced labor lawyers struggle to keep up with the ever-changing legal landscape. Imagine then the challenge facing America's small businesses. These are businesses that are run by men and women who struggle day to day simply to make ends meet. They typically have no administrative staff, little human resource expertise, and certainly no regular access to legal counsel. Today, small business owners contend with anti-discrimination laws, family, medical, and other protected leave laws, wage hour laws, privacy laws, workplace safety laws, tax laws, environmental laws, and of course, labor laws too. They struggle to decipher these overlapping and sometimes even conflicting federal, state, and local laws. And again, the problem is compounded by the fact that small businesses rarely employ a dedicated HR, labor professional, or other compliance staff. Today I will discuss how DOL's persuader rule and NLRB's poster rule will impact small business. In my written testimony, I have explained in greater detail how these rules and other changes by DOL and NLRB will affect small business. Imagine for a moment a man named Randy. He's a plumber in Illinois who worked for himself for years before deciding to hire a few assistants to cover growing demand. Randy serves as CEO, President, Treasurer, HR, VP, CFO, frontline supervisor of his company, all while working as a plumber on a daily basis. One day, Randy gets approached by someone identifying himself as a representative from the local plumbers union. He tells Randy that three of Randy's four plumbers want to be represented by a union. Randy doesn't know much about unions, but he knows he doesn't want a union representing the four plumbers he employs and works with hand in hand on a daily basis. Should he talk with the employees? What can he ask them? What can he tell them? What does Randy do? Well, today Randy might call NFIB, or I direct him to call an experienced labor attorney, ASAP. The attorney then becomes a business partner, helping Randy's business through the maze that is today's field of labor law. It is this partnership that is a grave risk due to NLB, NLR, or DOLs, I'm sorry, DOLs proposed persuader rule. Under the new persuader rule, all actions, comments, or communications that could have a direct or indirect object to persuade employees would be reportable to DOL. This includes virtually everything that a labor attorney would do for his client, whether or not there is union organizing activity going on. The net result of the new proposed rule will be that lawyers and law firms may no longer be willing to offer advice to employers about labor matters. We fear that this proposal will limit small employers' access to counsel on most aspects of labor law, an area where le legal advice is sorely needed. NLRB's recent actions will also greatly impact small businesses. In August, NLRB ordered small businesses to display a poster instructing workers on how to form unions. It did so despite the fact that the law creating the NLRB gives it no such authority. The notice posting rule, which will become effective on November 14th, imposes an unfair labor practice on any employer that fails to post the notice. 
On September 30th, NFIB filed a lawsuit challenging NLRB's intrusion in the workplace. We've asked the court to overturn the rule and declare that NLRB lacks statutory authority to require such a posting by 6 million private sector employers. NFIB's members are honorable and fair employers, and I do believe they have warm relationships with their employees. But they are troubled, confused, and scared by the avalanche of labor regulations and rules coming out of DOL and NLRB. Why should anyone care how these government entities treat small businesses? This question can be answered in one word, jobs. Jobs are what Americans want and need, and most jobs in America are created by small businesses. This tidal wave of new rules will do nothing but crush small businesses and further prolong America's economic woes. Thank you very much.